Australia is about to experience one of the most extensive heat waves on record with large parts of the country to bake in 45 degree temperatures for more than a week. Weather records are being broken as eastern Australia bakes in extreme heat. Hobart hit an all-time high today of 41.8 degrees and there are reports tonight of several homes destroyed by bushfires in Tasmania. Emergency crews across the state were on red alert as the mercury surged past 45 degrees, making today one of the hottest in Adelaide's history. There were too many hot spots to count across Australia. 48 in Port Augusta, Adelaide has only hit 44 three times in the last century. In Victoria, hoped and boiled at 44 degrees. New South Wales peaked at 45. 48 degrees at Woodna on Air Peninsula. In Queensland, Birdsville reached 47 degrees. Up on a tin roof, the temperature was closer to 55 degrees. Massive wildfires are scorching parts of the Australian island state of Tasmania. Thousands of people have fled the flames. More than 40 fires are still burning across Tasmania after a heat wave with temperatures up to 40 degrees hit the Australian island state. A tsunami warning is in effect after a massive 7.5 magnitude earthquake hit off the southern coast of Alaska. Happened around 4 a.m. Eastern this morning. Officials urge anyone in the warning area to move inland and find higher ground. Australia's record-breaking heat wave is continuing to fuel outbreaks of wildfires across scores of thousands of hectares in the southeast of the country. The pictures coming out of Australia tonight are apocalyptic. Flames devouring homes, huge black and brown blossoms of smoke. It's so hot the government had to change its forecast maps adding new shades of purple for temperatures possibly hitting 130 degrees. Scenes like this are becoming more common. The entire planet has gotten hotter in recent decades. The Australian Bureau of Meteorology is forecasting 54 degrees Celsius in central Australia for next Monday. Jerusalem has virtually ground to a standstill after Israel's worst snowstorm for 20 years. Up to 15 centimetres fell overnight, forcing public transport and schools to shut down. There's been severe weather too in the West Bank, where hail, snow and heavy rain brought flooding and landslides. Four Palestinians died, and dozens of houses were flooded in the Gaza Strip. In the north of Israel, along the border with Lebanon, much of the Galilee region was paralysed by the rare wintry conditions, with 30 centimetres of snow reported in the city of Sun. cyclone is growing in force and heading for the north coast of WA. Tropical cyclone Norel is now Category 3 and should be Category 4 when it comes close to land on Friday. Workers have also been evacuated from oil rigs off the coast. And if you take a look at these photographs, it's probably not surprising. These were taken by a tugboat operator and show a massive storm bearing down on the coast. But this was on Wednesday, well before the cyclone was anywhere near those oil fields. Tropical cyclone Norel has intensified as it continues to move towards WA's northwest. There's a cyclone warning in place for several communities, including Exmo. Snow in Southern California. This is not what Southern California generally looks like. A major highway shutdown thanks to blankets of blowing snow. Thousands of cars and semis were immobilized for hours, stuck on a snowbound section of I-5 just outside Los Angeles overnight. With that wicked wind and snow comes killer cold. Farmers in California scrambled to protect precious crops as temperatures plunged toward record lows in the 30s. In parts of Colorado, Wyoming, where places are seeing not only blizzard conditions, but also big dust storm. Roads in Australia melt as record temperatures hit the outdoors. But Queensland towns have smashed temperature records for a second day in a row, but close to 50 degrees. There are already more than 100 fires, wildfires, out of control. These are the most catastrophic conditions for fire in Australia in living memory. What seems to be a backwards weather picture, freezing in the southwest, record warmth across much of the east. It's a tale of two temperatures, warm in the east and rare winter chill in the west. Overnight, temperatures again fell into the 30s in Southern California. Government climatologists reporting the biggest Arctic ice melt in history. Arctic sea ice. It has melted to the smallest amount 
ever you've ever seen by satellites, NASA and NOAA got together and said, what do we think? What's going on here? Mm. Along the California coast, the ocean is expected to rise another three to five feet by the end of the century. 3.5 million Californians live within three feet of sea level. Today, we learned some facts about how this Earth is changing and how fast. New research concludes that Antarctica is melting. Floodwaters are covering large areas of central and southern Indiana after days of heavy rain. Thousands of fish washed ashore in Holly's Island today. The dead menhaden fish stretching a mile and a half long. Apparently, you can smell those decomposing fish from about a mile away. Jakarta, the capital of Southeast Asia's largest economy, today brought to its knees. Deadly flooding has submerged Jakarta, paralyzing the Indonesian capital. At least seven people have been killed in the rising waters, triggered by heavy monsoon rains, with water levels up to six and a half feet in some places. Officials have warned that over the next few days, the rains will continue to increase. A city of more than 10 million people has come to a standstill. Fire continues to rage. Just the scope and the size of that fire, it's a, a five-kilometer fire front. Firefighters say they've been surprised by the ferocity of a large bushfire that's burning out of control east of Melbourne. The warnings for some significant snowfall are already in place, with a rarely issued red warning being given out for parts of Wales. Heathrow, the world's busiest airport, was again hit with flight cancellations, distracting thousands. It's the same story in Paris. Heavy snow has also fallen in Poland. Croatia's been struggling with a blizzard all week, affecting 11 major cities and causing transport chaos. Residents in Western Cape York communities are on alert tonight after a tropical low intensified into a Canterbury 1 cyclone a short time ago. Cyclone Oswald is expected to make landfall before midnight. North Queensland also prepares for torrential rain over the coming days. Freezing temperatures and heavy snow continue to batter parts of Europe, causing further travel chaos. At Frankfurt Airport, 27% of flights were cancelled after a bout of fresh snow following freezing rain on Monday. Meteo France has issued orange alerts for Paris. Charles de Gaulle Airport was similarly hit, with mostly short-haul services being affected. We begin with one of the worst Arctic storm systems to hit a wide section of the country in years. It has gone from dangerous now to deadly. Minnesota's wind chills could be as low as... 50. That's five zero below. Sudden snowbursts and icy conditions turned a Cincinnati highway into a death trap. Whiteout conditions blinded drivers before this 86 vehicle pile up. Never seen like it in my life. I called my boss freaking out. I called my wife. I just, I was just, I was just, I was just I was It was 12 below zero when a Minnesota snowplow driver found a snowmobiler who'd been missing since Saturday. He looked like he was frozen. I mean, he looked severely frozen. Vicious winds caused plenty of property damage. The gusts were so powerful, chunks of ice, at least a foot thick, blew off of Wisconsin's Lake Winnebago. The residents who've been living here along the shores of Lake Winnebago their whole lives tell me they've never seen anything quite like this. In Michigan, the Pontiac Silverdome under renovation appears to be damaged after snow and windstorms hit the Detroit area. And in Utah, a frozen water pipe on a hillside may have sent a giant boulder into a woman's home. It struck her bedroom at 3 in the morning. She needed emergency surgery. With her jaw wired shut, I'm probably not going to get the full story for a couple of weeks. As the storm blows across the northeast today, New England is bracing for up to a foot of snow. Up to three feet fell on upstate New York. Cyclone strength winds and torrential rain are tonight continuing to batter a stretch of Queensland's coastline almost 1,800 kilometres long. Communities from Cooktown to the border are being affected by the remains of ex-tropical cyclone Oswald, which is slowly gaining strength. Hundreds of people are stranded at Ingham. A big chill, 133 million Americans in this together. Wisconsin, Chicago, New York, and Washington, D.C. We're doing anything we could to stay warm. It was so cold today, the Great Lakes had a wind chill of minus 40 which feels colder than the North Pole. This is the real deal, the polar air. This is New York, the 
the center of the city and it's been so cold there that water coming out of one of the fountains freezes. Now, more than a dozen states have winter weather advisories with major cities in the Midwest either near or below zero on Tuesday. And for most of the country, it's a sudden and drastic change. In Cedar Rapids, Iowa, a balmy 51 degrees Saturday. Less than 48 hours later, it was two degrees below zero. A temperature swing of more than 53 degrees. The wind is just ripping. It makes it 10 times worse than it should be. A fire at an ice-covered warehouse in Chicago has rekindled two days after the large blaze first began. Firefighters were forced to return to the fully engulfed icy building to battle the aggressive fire once again. Here comes after the extremely cold weather caused hydrants and hoses to freeze. 13 states, 91 million Americans are facing a weekend of treacherous cold ice and snow. And this is how it looks. This week, Arctic air washing down over this country in waves, wave after wave. Queensland is again a state of disaster as an intense low pressure system continues its destructive advance towards southeast Queensland. This afternoon, three tornadoes struck near Bundaberg, smashing Bagara, where a disaster has been declared. A disaster declaration has also been made at Gladstone, where a metre of rainfall has forced the evacuation of communities as dams spill over. Severe rains have caused dangerously high sea levels along large parts of the southern African coastline over the past few days. As many as 40 people were killed when torrential rains in South Africa and Zimbabwe swelled the Limpopo River. At least 150,000 people have been displaced by the deluge and government officials fear things will get worse if the rains continue. For many, living in southeastern Queensland is becoming an endurance test, recovering from one natural disaster just in time to deal with the next. The latest storms and floods sweeping across the state of parts of northern New South Wales have been at, uh, seen at least three people die. Hundreds rescued and thousands of residents ordered to evacuate and more than 200,000 homes without power. And once again, you know, you talk about a hundred you know, year flood, you know, Ipswich is suffering the, the one and two flood every two years. The rain is getting heavier in Sydney tonight with the worst of the wild weather yet to come. Now to the Sunshine Coast where big waves and rough seas have caused a build-up of foam along the beach at Alexandra Headland. The foam has blanketed nearby roads and even made its way in some, into some people's homes. People have been down on the beachfront all morning watching this vision. Uh, it's just incredible, incredible to see. The, the waves have brought up foam right up across the road. It's coming across the road into resorts now and, and as you said, people's homes. Oh, I couldn't believe it. Never seen anything like this. I've lived here for about four years, but no, nah, never seen anything like this in my life. I just can't believe the extent of how it's going into people's houses. and It's crazy. It's just crazy, but it's a little bit scary too. A 6.7 magnitude earthquake struck Chile. Buildings were rattling as the first quake. A 6.7 magnitude earthquake was shaken central Chile. We've got debris now flying to the left and center of this system. Sirens have been going off here. The wind is kicking up along with the rain. Again, a funnel just crossing the interstate here in Adairsville. Scientists think it was an EF2 or greater with wind speeds more than 125 miles an hour. This sinkhole in Guangzhou City swallowed a whole building complex on Monday. The ground first gave way at around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Then there was a further landslip later, which claimed another three-storey building. Britain's top health chief, Professor Dame Sally Davis, has warned that we're moving towards an antibiotics apocalypse. And the fact that bacteria is becoming increasingly resistant to current drugs, coupled with the fact that we're running low on supplies, poses, she says, a bigger threat than global warming. 